Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. Hi, I'm Karen Meshures, and today I have guests. I've got Dave Gundrum and his two beautiful children, Gracie and David, and we are having cooking with kids. And this is all about leftovers from Thanksgiving. So let's get started, Dave. I know that we're going to do some acorn ham and white bean soup. All right. We're going to make some Cornish pastry pockets, and we're going to do a special little salad for the kids, and then we're going to finish off with chocolate-covered pretzels. Sounds good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to let you start. Let's get going with this bean soup. First thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to peel the acorn squash. I'll do this because you guys, it's a little tough. Okay. All right. So you want to go ahead and take a nice sturdy knife, get a good hold of it, take off the ends. Oh, it looks like a flower. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Discard that and then take, make sure you got a good grip on it, cut it in half. We want to work with the acorn squash and after you cut it in half, you've got to take out the That's seeds. That's a lot to see. Yeah, yeah, they are. And actually the seeds, if you want, they're just like pumpkin seeds. You can go ahead and clean out the seeds, take away the, the membrane and you can toast them if you want in the oven and eat them. But today we're just going to discard them. So you go ahead and scrape out your seeds on both your uh, sides of the acorn squash. And then you want to get a peeler and you want to go ahead and peel it. Now this is a really tough skin. It's like rhinoceros skin on here. So it takes a little bit of effort. But after you peel it, I went ahead and peeled one to give us a little bit of time saving effort here. I've already peeled one, and then you get it peeled down into nice little wedges like this, and then dice it into small pieces. Okay, yeah. And then we're gonna take these small pieces and we're gonna toss it in a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt, and we're gonna put it in the oven to roast it. And the reason we're gonna roast it is to soften it up and cook it, and also give it a little bit of the caramelization that'll bring the sugars out of the starch, okay? So let's take this whole thing here. You can actually, I'm gonna let you put the oil on it. All righty. Davey, you can Ooh, grab the... Uh, red oil. It's like a yeah, it's a, it's a special oil thing here. Go ahead and pour some oil on there for me. About, that's good there, about a tablespoon or so. Yeah. And then just spin it around, get the oil on here. All right, and a little bit of salt, which is right here. Fresh ground salt. And that's all we'll do for that, okay? Now, have you, have you ever had this uh, acorn squash before that you remember? No. No. Nope. Well, this is in replacing this soup. Usually, you use a uh, carrots is very common for soup. Instead of carrots, we're going to use the squash. That smells really good. Yeah, it does. It's kind of sweet, doesn't it? All right, we're going to put it in the oven. And the oven's at 400 degrees. Yeah. We'll let that start to roast, okay? Okay. All right. So that's the first part. Now we're going to go ahead and cut up some celery, some onions, and some garlic. Now we're not going to go too small because we're going like, to like nice pieces in the soup. How do you cut so fast? Practice. You notice how I keep my fingers back? Mm -hmm. Don't try this at home. None of the kids should be doing this. Let mom and dad do that part. Now I've already peeled my garlic. Yep. So what I do is I take the garlic and just set it in there and you smash it. All right? And oh, get wow. it started. Yeah. Just smash it a little bit. I'm going to use four cloves of garlic. I like a lot of garlic. Okay, so we got the garlic, we got the celery, got a small onion. Onion, I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. So there, we got our vegetables kind of rough chopped. And then we're going to go ahead, all we have to do is, and you can do this again with the oil, Gracie. Yay! Pour a little oil in the pan. All right, about a tablespoon or two. I'm going to cover the bottom. That's about good. All right, that's good. And then let's take this into our stock pot. All right, so now move that around a little bit. Now, Dave, you want to come over and stir this for me for a second? All right, so we got that going. We're going to let that go for about four or five minutes, okay, just to brown up the vegetables a little bit and start to soften them. Ooh, I'd and like then we're going to start adding the other things. Now what we have is we have two cans of uh, white cannoli beans. You could use navy beans if you want. We have some leftover ham from the Thanksgiving dinner that we chopped and, and cubed. And we've got two quarts of chicken stock, a little hot sauce, some herb de Provence. Okay, Now you could use your own mix of um, some sage and thyme and salt, pepper and bay leaf if you want. Or you could use an herb de Provence, which is a, a blend. I'm also going to top with a little parsley to throw in here. So let me get some of that. So you don't need to put that in at the beginning. You want to go ahead and stir them a little bit, see if the, uh, they're starting to brown a little bit? Sure. It doesn't take too long. 
All right, thank you, Grace. You're doing the stirring. What are you going to do to help out? Anyway? I'll know. tell you what. You know what? I love the smell of parsley. Do you like to smell parsley? Yeah. Why don't you take take a quick smell and tell me what it smells like? It smells like lettuce. It smells like lettuce. Yeah. Wow. And I Gracie was over lettuce. here doing the stirring. Everything's bubbling. Yeah. Oh. Right, you want to get on the bat, do Stir you? that in. No, I already have it. All right, I'm gonna let, Dave, you want to help? Ooh. How about you take the bowl of ham and bring it over here and we're going to pour it in the stock pot. Can you do that? Come over here to Gracie. Can Gracie let David in here. Oh, he's going to pour okay. the ham in? Put the ham in. Ah. Ah, that's how I heard you. All right. Oh, now you want to go ahead and bring over the bowl of beans, Gracie? Okay. Uh, now this soup really should only I take about in. 10 or 15 minutes to put together. And then, all right, and we got the beans. Ooh, that looks delicious. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and bring over some of that liquid, the stock for us. Here right. you are, Daddy. Thank you. Dave, I know you're going to use a quart of liquid, but we always have some extra on hand because sometimes we want to thin up the soup, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you want it thinner, um, also I was mentioning to you earlier, if we wanted to, we could take out some of the uh, stock and puree it and put it back in to give it more of a thick consistency, depending on how you like it. But today I'm going for a clear broth soup, so we won't... Um, Keep pureeing any of it. That's great. Now we need a little bit of the herb pretty vance. So. Ooh, herby. <laughs> yep, now we're just going to go with a, this is a, oh, smell that. Ooh. That smells like Thanksgiving, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to go with about a tablespoon of that. Two, there, about, that should be enough. Yeah. And now I'm going to have, Dave, do you want to put the hot smell. sauce in? Mm. Put the hot sauce in. About Smells four or five good. little shakes of hot sauce. Ooh. Keep going. That's good. That ought to be enough for now. We can always add more later when we need oh, it. Oh, I put another job of hot sauce when you're pulling. All right, that sounds great. You guys have done a wonderful job. Sweet. How long does this need to cook, Dave? Just bring it to a simmer. Once you get a little boil going on, it's ready to go, and we can turn the temperature down. And then yeah. in a little bit, when we start smelling the acorn cooking and the sweetness of that, we'll add that to it. Which will give great. it a lot of color, which that actually looks really good. Well, a couple more minutes. That's going to come up a simmer. Let's see how the acorn squash is doing. Okay, it's everybody brown. move back. Woo. Oh, you can hear it sizzling. Yeah, well, looks about good. Four or five more minutes on the acorn squash, and that'll be ready to go in the soup. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, well, Dave, let's get a little bit cleaned up. All right. And we'll come right back to the soup. Okay. Dave, you told me that I'd smell that squash when it started, so I think it's, it's going, don't oh, yeah, you? Yeah, you can smell it. You smell the squash? Yeah. Yeah, well, that means it's ready. It's got nice roasted down to it. That's, yeah, yeah. There we go. Ooh. Wow. All right, so mm. now we're going to go ahead and add this to the soup. I'm going to scrape it into the soup here. It's softened up, and it's going to add a lot of sweetness to the soup and some color. Now again, I'm using this in place of carrots, which a lot of people make their ham and bean soup with carrots, but to change it up for the fall here, for the Thanksgiving season, we're going to use the squash. Well, Dave, while you were waiting on the squash to cook, I cleaned up and got everything out so we can start making our Cornish pastry for our Hot Pockets. Ooh. All right. Yeah, they're, not, they're Hot Pockets in this country, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. everyone's going to recognize them as Hot Pockets, yeah. but they are called Cornish pastries. And this is where we we're going to utilize some of the leftovers from Thanksgiving. Instead of just having leftovers every day, we're going to make nice little pastries for us, okay? Which will make cool. the soup and the pastries and the salad we're making today and cool. the dessert all come together. Okay, all you right. guys you guys help Daddy. Yep. Okay. All right, so the recipe's written out. The recipe's uh, fairly easy to follow, but you can also buy empanada pastry or just use puff pastry from Petri's Farm and other things like that if you don't have the time. But we're going to make ours from scratch. Yeah. So we're going to start with two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. You want to go ahead and put that in for me, Gracie? Just pour that in there. All right. Now, then we're going to go ahead. And Dave, you want to come over to my other side over here? You can help me out. We're going to sift in. This is confectionate sugar, two tablespoons. Go ahead and put it inside my sifter here. Just drop it in there. There we go. All right. And you just go ahead and that way breaks it up a little bit. Oh, cool. All right. And then we'll go ahead and add the salt. And it went right in. Okay. So then just to make, this is called a uh, pastry knife, and we use that to stir it up a little bit more. Can I try? So there's no lumps yet? Go ahead. All right, actually we're going to let you do some of the harder work. Yeah. 
Now we have um, six ounces of butter. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and yep, just regular that looks butter like cube, cheese. cold. Yeah, it looks like cheese, yeah, but it's just a little butter, so we'll go put that in there. I'll start chopping that in to mix it in. Right. Takes a little more. Squeeze the cheese. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add four ounces of Crisco. Ooh, okay. it looks like ice cream. Yeah. The cheese and the, it's sticking. Okay, well, that's why we got to do the, okay, what you want to do is you want to kind of push it down and go to the sides like this. Just work it in. This takes a little while. This is how you make fresh pastry for all kinds of stuff. You can do fruit pastries or meat pastries. Meat. But we're doing, yeah, we're doing a dinner pastry. All right, well, Gracie, you about have all the flour blended in well with the butter. Now, we used unsalted butter, Gracie. That's why the color was different, a little more rich in color. Yeah. Okay. That's why I thought it looked like so cheese. So keep doing that for another second here. Now, we have the yolk of one egg, okay, which I have here. We already cracked. And I'm going to blend it with six tablespoons of cold water. Now, you want to use, definitely use cold water. You're making me thirsty. <laughs> yeah. You think this looks blended, Dad? Uh, keep going. One more second there. I'm going to whisk this up real quick. We go ahead and we just kind of spread that around in there. And what do I do? And then using a fork, go ahead and use your fork. Now you just go ahead and stir it in. Let me get this started for you. Get it nice and evenly blended. All right, go ahead and stir that for a second. Okay. See how it is? Make sure we get all the moisture in there. There we go. All right, that's pretty good. Let me help you finish up here. Get the stuff off the bottom. All right, well, we've got this mixed well enough. Now all we got to do is we have a pan here with some saran wrap on it. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. And I'm just going to take and put it all in there. All right, this makes it easy for us it to roll in. It smells them. good, like cookies. Yeah, it smells like cookies, doesn't it? Like sugar dough cookies. Yeah. All right. What do we do next? Well, then all I do is I take and I wrap it up like this. Whoa. All it right. looks like a taco. It looks like a Rice Krispie, a huge Rice Krispie, too. Let's Ooh. Fry it a little bit. All right, well, what we're doing is just forming all that dough together, okay? Kind of kneading the dough like you would with yeah. bread and stuff. Mm -hmm. We just do it in this plastic piece here. See how quick that goes together? Wow. Yeah. Looks like bread. So that looks great and it smells great too. All right, yeah, we're about done Love with that, Karen. Love fresh dough. Love fresh dough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the fridge because I know it has to stay in there. How long, Dave? Um, two hours would be really good or even overnight if you want to. But just leave it in that log form and then what we'll do is when we take it out, we'll cut it into six even pieces. Sounds and then we'll great. Roll them out. Sounds great. Alrighty. Okay, I need to kids. turn off the soup though right now. All righty, we're going to have a quick break. We're going to have a word from our sponsors. We'll be back to make chocolate dipped pretzels. <laughs> okay, let's get this in the fridge. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well, that's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Welcome back. I'm here with Gracie and David, and we are making what? Chocolate covered pretzel. You got it, and you've already got a pretzel in your hand. Are you getting ready to eat that while we start? Yeah. Good enough for me. Now, what I've got is I've got some milk chocolate, because I know kids like milk chocolate a whole lot better than they do the dark chocolate or the semi-sweet chocolate. So we're going to do two different ways. I'm going to cut my chocolate up with a knife, and you are going to break up your chocolate into the bowl, okay, in nice little pieces. But go ahead and start on that pretzel. Okay, we want to cut it just in nice strips, and then we're going to chop it up so it melts really fast. All right, I've got all this chopped up into little tiny pieces, and what I'm going to do is put it into my bowl, and we are using about 12 ounces of chocolate. So I know your hands are clean because we washed them, but how about put your pretzel right there and break up your chocolate, and we'll get it in the microwave, okay? And what we're going to do in the microwave is we're going to let it go for about 30 seconds and give it a stir then another 30 seconds and give it a stir, and then maybe about 15 seconds more if it's not completely melted, okay? I ate my whole pretzel. You ate the whole pretzel. Okay, here, wipe your hands off real quick, and then let's get this chocolate in the bowl, okay? 
Let's rip it. <laughs> there you go. Just have fun. Just pop it right in the bowl. There you go. Good job. Almost done. Just want to get it in. Okay, nice. you need to use that wet paper towel again to wipe that chocolate off your fingers because chocolate melts quick. All right, in the microwave, here we go. <coughs> and I'm going to push the start button that gives me one minute, but we're only going to wait for 30 seconds. It's time, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pull this out. Now, it doesn't look like it's melted, mm -mm. but it's just starting to melt on the bottom. So Ooh. we give it a quick stir and keep all the chocolate in there, and we're going to let it finish up another 30 seconds, okay? Yeah. Tell me when. There. Okay, there goes our buzzer. Let's see what's happening now. Ooh. Okay. It's melting. Another. It's melting just enough to get it warm and gooey. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Delicious, like, Another little bit of time. It's yeah. like s'mores, except without the graham cracker and marshmallow. Let's yeah. take another look real fast. Chocolate's one of those things you have to be really careful with because mm -hmm. if you make it too hot too quick, it won't work right. Yeah, it'd be like it's too liquidy. That's right. So let's see if this is going to melt out. Mm. We've got a few lumps, but it's all starting to get so nice and warm that it's going to work. So let's put this over here. And we dip the pretzels in chocolate. That's right. You know what? I'm going to do the very first one, and you guys do just the way I do, okay? And everybody gets to do one. Gracie, why don't you go get me a spoon, okay? Okay. All right, David, are you ready to do this? Here's a spoon. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to scrape this off. We're going to put this right here. You watching good? Yeah. Look. Oh we're going to put it right there. We're going to take the spoon and we're going to go about halfway. Okay, see? And what you have to do is you have to shake it off a little bit. Just like this. And we've got all sorts of sprinkles and toppings. I've even got some uh, German chocolate cake sprinkles Ooh. and some. This is a one I'm going to try. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it down here and I'm going to roll it around. Is it like toffee? It's is like it? toffee. And that's one of my favorite things. All right. So now we've got this. We're going to put it on our wax paper tray. And we're going to let it just set for a little while. Takes about 10 minutes. Okay? So, who's, who's first? Me. 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 I think that he gets to go first because <laughs> all he's talked about is pretzels. All pretzels. right. Pretzels. You want to stand right over here with me? You hold it right there and keep it dipped in. Okay? Let's drizzle some of this down here. Which topping do you want? A lot. Mm -mm -mm. A lot? I like, I like the chocolate and that one and that the one. The orange and the chocolate. Okay, you start shaking yours off. Just give it a nice shake in there. Let's get all that there. excess chocolate off. There you go. Ooh, no, it's my all turn. All right, it's your turn. I want to lick some You can do this. Off. You big girl. Oh, you want to lick some chocolate? Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be ready in a few minutes, and you can lick some chocolate off. Yeah, the chocolate's not coming off. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this up. Okay, this one, right? Just roll it around, get it all covered up. All right, Gracie, we've got a whole bunch of these pretzels to make, and I've lost one of my helpers to the spoon. He's a chocoholic. Hey, what's up? Okay, you and I are going to make these, and as soon as we come back, we're going to help Daddy make the Cornish Pop over pastries, okay? Okay. All right, you get that one going for me. Yeah. Okay, we have finished up our pretzels and we've had some chocolate in this uh, episode, that is for sure. Gracie got our pastry and I'm gonna leave the Cornish pastry hot pockets up to Dave and the kids. Are you gonna go get the fresh chives for the buttermilk I'm dressing? I'm getting the chives. Okay. Woo! All right, now earlier we went ahead and we made the uh, 
the cornish or the pastry okay mm -hmm. so what i did though we're going to leave this one aside what i already had prepared earlier is a couple more of them cool. okay and i've let them soften up the room temperature now the log i went ahead and i just cut it in half and i cut it into six even pieces and then patted them out into little patties now here i have a double batch though for us all right so all you got to do with these now what we have to keep in our theme of Thanksgiving, we have all our leftovers. We have our leftover mashed potatoes, leftover stuffing, leftover mixed vegetables. We have some cubed ham, turkey, and, cheese. and some cheese. Yes, which is the favorite part. And here's part of our leftover turkey. turkey. All right, let me slip by you, Gracie. Turkey, now, turkey, all you do is take a little flour, put it on your cutting board. All right, put that down. I'm going to let Gracie do this. And then you take your rolling pin. All right, that's kind of heavy. All right, and you just kind of roll it back and forth a little bit. Okay. Then you go both ways, okay? Just do that, don't let it, there you go. Turn it again. You can use your hands on it a little bit too. All right. That's a big turnover. Yeah, well you wanna get them about six or seven inches. Okay. There we go, we're gonna do six of them real quick for the put in the oven. All right, now if it starts to break up, just put a little more flour on it. Kind of put it together. All right, so that's real close to what we want. All right, about six inches in around. And then stuffing, you want about a quarter cup of filling. And you just do whatever you decide, just like whatever mix, mixings you want. We're gonna start the first one, a little bit of mashed potatoes. Okay, let's put a little potato on there. And then put a little cheese on. All right, kind of put it to the one side. Just put all your stuffing on one side. That's plenty of cheese. And some ham. You can do a little bit of ham. That's your first one. All right. Now that's probably a lot right there. That's enough stuffing. Now, yep, you kind of want to, you got to kind of keep it together. All right. Let's see how nice that looks. Ooh, it looks like dumplings, except stuffed up. Okay, now what you want to do with the fork, wait a second. You take a fork and you go all the way around. You do like a pie crimp, okay? Now this is... And now, like I said earlier, you could buy a pastry, phyllo dough or empanada dough at the, in the frozen section at the grocery store and use it for this also if you don't want to make your own fresh pastry. Keep going out. But we made ours homemade. Yep, we did. All right, and then you want to go ahead and put a couple like that. Now, one last thing you want to do before you put it in there is we have a little bit of the um, little water here. That looks oh. like a croissant. Is it like this is uh, the egg yolk. Mm-hmm. Well, we use the egg yolk in the, in the pastry dough. This is the egg white, and we just kind of kind of put a little bit on here. That helps it brown nicely. All right, so there's one. Okay. All right, now we're going to be doing... Pick it up. Several more. Um, yeah, beautiful. Good job. Hey. All right, Let now, Davey, you want to try to do one there? Yeah. All yeah. righty, come on over here. Step back, Gracie, and let Davey do one. All right. Put a little there, and we're going to use the, pit, the rolling pin. All right, get your hands on it and push it back and forth a little bit. All right, go all the way over. All right, wait a second, wait a second. You got to, you got to be, the pastry is pretty delicate, so you got to work with it, just like pie dough. I've seen this before on a cartoon. You've seen this on a cartoon? <laughs> like um, this wait, wait kind of food. Oh, this kind of food on a cartoon. All right, here, go a little more, went a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. About seven inches, about as big as a, a little seven inch plate. Mm -hmm. All right. And you gotta go make sure there's enough flour on it, it doesn't stick. All right. All right, so we wanna, you wanna try off, the, we'll start off with the stuffing on this one, okay, Davey? All right, so then we can kind of fold that over. And get ready I'm to old. spice it up. All right, or let me back up I here, let me get this done so we can move through them. Wow, you guys are doing a great job. Yeah. Are you going to make one for me, too? Ask her what toppings she wants. Oh, what I want, want it all. Do you want? We've got to take a quick break. We're going to finish these up, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I want to eat. So let's have a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. The Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Holden Brothers Farm Market in Chalote for supplying the fresh produce on this week's show. Swing by their indoor market located near Mile Marker 10 on Highway 17 or check them out online at HoldenBrothersFarmMarket.com. The pastry's in the oven and we're on our last little bit of this show. So let's make our salad. It's a really easy wedge and 
It's kid friendly because they love this homemade buttermilk dressing. So while we're waiting for the hot pastries to come out of the oven, Dave, I've got the chives out of my garden. Yes, yeah, fresh chives, can't beat that. Yeah, we decided to do the buttermilk ranch because all kids love ranch, but it doesn't have to come out of a jar. You can make it at home really quick and fresh. What's so, this? That's mayonnaise. Wow, that's so got, creamy. Yeah, so we're gonna dice up and fine dice some of this. You can just put that down for a second. All right, how much chives am I gonna put in this? You need about a, a teaspoon, I believe it is, Dave. Teaspoon? Oh, I got yeah. plenty of chives. Then. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna put a little, a touch more though. Touch more than I usually do. And I need about a tablespoon of fresh parsley. I'm going to grab okay. some right here. I didn't grow that. You didn't grow this? No, the... didn't grow this. All right. Well, so this is what the, your favorite dressing is, ranch, right, Gracie? Yeah. All right. So we got this all kind of fine diced. And we'll just go ahead and put it all in a little whisking bowl here. All right. That's all you got to do. Then we're going to go ahead and take and add some lemon juice. All right. Which is about a tablespoon, which is, oh, did I get you in the eye? No, I'm just, it's okay. lemon. Some I lemon love juice. Lemons. I like licking them. Add a half a cup of heavy mayonnaise. All right, you can use whatever brand you like. That's good. And then, yeah, we'll let's get in a second. And we've got Ooh. one cup of buttermilk. All right, and you don't put all that in at first. You want to get kind of whisked in a little bit. That way you can break up the mayonnaise and make it blend in smoother. All right. That's already looking like a dressing, isn't it? Yeah. And this is great to make as a party dip, too. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Now you could add sour cream to it to thicken it up if you want to do for a party dip. Exactly. All right, and then we're going to go with two teaspoons of dill. Just like, dried dill. Like dill pickle? Yep, like dill pickle, but just dill like pickle. dried dill. Can I stir? Yeah, you can go ahead, sir. Karen's and I know we're going to use an eighth of a teaspoon of dried mustard. Ooh. Keep so we'll stirring. get that in. And then a little paprika. And we're going to use about a fourth of a teaspoon of paprika. So that's done. And then all we'll do is go ahead and put it into our cravat here. Now you want this to sit for a little while, Dave, don't you? Yeah, so it can the flavors marry. will develop in 10 minutes or so. That's all it takes. Okay. This is ready to go. We've got our wedge, our uh, dipping sticks, and a little bit of tomato. We're going to come back in just a few minutes and have everything put together and get ready to get our Hot Pockets out of the oven. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well... That's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Welcome back. I have gotten everything put out. I've had such wonderful help from my friends. I don't know if you guys have uh, ever seen these pumpkin beers, but we thought this would be a great addition, a shandy, a pumpkin shandy. Just mix about half ginger ale and half specialty beer and you've got a special drink, nice and light. Kids, of course, have apple juice. We've got our beautiful Cornish pastries filled with all of Thanksgiving's wonderful leftovers. We have acorn squash, ham and bean soup, wonderful salad with buttermilk, homemade dressing on there, and the chocolate pretzels, right, kids? Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. You can find us um, and the recipes for everything here on Facebook. Just search for the Coastal Kitchen. I want to thank my friends, David and Gracie, and of course their daddy Dave, for being with me today and presenting all these beautiful, tasty recipes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, thank Happy you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. We are ATMC-TV Channel 3 and HD Channel 910, your community channel.